Welcome back. Today on Dialed In DIY, we're working with manually charged electronic devices. If they're not working as well as they used to, it's not a reason to get rid of them. You know me, if something's not working, I love to take it apart, but this time, we have things that are crank powered or shake powered that are great for emergencies, camping, or other uses, but sometimes they can't store power anymore. So, let's figure out a way to breathe new life into our dead devices. It's really simple and very cost effective. I actually have a bunch of great lights, radios, and combination products that are manually charged. They hold a power charge in either a battery or a capacitor, but guess what? They can wear out just like a regular battery. No matter what the means by which these work, they all have the same basic principle. They use conductive coils of wire and magnets. These shake flashlights are great. They work just like a shake weight that you use for exercise. However, this particular one won't hold any charge anymore. The way this works is really quite cool. There's a large magnet inside a tube that can move freely back and forth. It'll pass through this copper coil in the middle, and when it does, it creates current. That current is then stored as power in either a rechargeable battery or a supercapacitor, and most of these shake flashlights use the supercapacitor approach. The crank charge products also use a form of electromagnetic induction to create current, and it works really, really well. In fact, many times these can put out more in a shorter period of time, which works quite effectively. You'll notice that this one, just like the previous light, can't hold a charge anymore either. It'll only light up while it's being cranked. As soon as you stop cranking, that's done. So, let's start fixing these things. This particular kind of light's quite easy to work with because all I have to do is remove these four screws from the back and then I can slowly start to separate the case. But you'll notice at this point it stops towards the front because there's some flashing lights on the side that have these little amber covers on them. So I'm gonna carefully start to pry these out so that I don't break them because I wanna put them back intact. When you open this one up on the inside, you're actually gonna find a rechargeable battery. And guess what? It looks like a typical, normal, rechargeable button cell battery. And the reason it looks that way is because it is. These batteries are actually glued in place two different ways. There's an adhesive that holds the lead contacts to the battery, and then there's also hot glue that holds the battery in place. We need to carefully remove all of that and slide the battery out. Make sure to clean up any residual glue that may be on the circuit board as well, and then go on to looking for a replacement battery. I found one online for a small fraction of the price of the original cost of this light itself. Securing the new battery in place in this particular model is actually quite easy. I'm just taking a very thin piece of electrical tape and sliding it underneath the bottom lead contact. You can see it here is a long thin strip of conductive metal. I'm then gonna go ahead and put the battery back in place in the same orientation that the first one was in, positive side up. Then just wrap the rest of the tape all the way around the battery and the top contact point. I then go back with some hot glue and make sure the battery stays in place and isn't gonna slide around while the light's in use. The flashlight in the bottom left corner also had a rechargeable battery inside, but this particular one also ran a radio. The battery could also be found online so that I could replace it as well. But here you see these two lights are actually identical. I had two of them that were dead and I fixed them both. Well, it's time to go on to putting them back together. The first thing you need to do is just get the wires out of the way and put the top part of the shell back in place. It's not time to add the screws back yet though because we need to put these little side covers back in. You have to do that with the case with a little bit of flexibility to open back up. That way they can snap fully back into their position. Then you can put the screws back in. As you've seen me do many times before, I like to take things that don't work anymore and take them apart to make new things out of them. However, it's also very satisfying being able to take something that didn't work as well as it used to and bringing it back to its normal life. This was actually really cool because I took several different devices, spent just under about an hour working on them, and actually was able to salvage over $100 worth of hardware for just a few bucks. Thank you for watching. Please press like and then subscribe. There will be more dialed in DIY to come.